Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, towards this uh, end of the course, this uh, couple of lectures we will see applications of uh, Lyapunov theory and one of the good applications of Lyapunov theory as uh, I mean as it appears in recent literature, literature is something called uh, neuro adaptive design which are going to study in this one or two lectures here. There are various uh, I mean approaches under this title that means lot of people will, uh, will propose different uh, ideas within this framework. But uh, we will take you through, I will take you through just one or two approaches which are uh, very promising. So, this particular lecture will study one approach which is uh, there in the literature for about 10, 15 years uh, uh, and it, is, uh, it has been applied successfully to a variety of problems in different engineering fields including aerospace actually. So, that is what I will take you through this particular lecture and next lecture we will uh, follow up with uh, another approach that uh, we, we use in our uh, research as well actually. Okay, so, we will uh, study this. So, the motivation for this uh, neuro adaptive is perfect system modeling is difficult, we know that. See, first of all you may uh, like sources of imperfection, see if you see where this uh, imperfection comes, the first thing is uh, like on model dynamics, it means part of the system dynamics uh, you can uh, you may not be able to model or you intentionally do not want to model, okay, so to have a simplified model. And uh, one example is probably like uh, your number of states are probably same, the st state space uh, dimension and other thing remains same, but you intentionally want to like uh, some miss some algebraic terms in the model, okay, to have a simplified model or uh, I mean is it is not possible for us to have these algebraic terms actually. Another example is uh, let us say if even if the model all algebraic terms are contained, then the accurate knowledge of system parameters may be an issue actually. Like exactly how do you know what is the system parameter that goes through that. For example, like a mechanical system, mass, moment of inertia, all that you can, uh, you can estimate, you can uh, up to a certain level of accuracy. And not only that, the, the, the system parameters change during operation as well. For example, like if your aircraft is flying, you are continuously, uh, your fuel is burning out anyway. So, uh, that particular thing exactly predicting how much fuel is gone and all that is, is difficult, they will not be able to do that. And let us say passenger movements inside the aircraft, so even if the mass remains constant, distribution of mass uh, is different and hence the moment of inertia value keeps on changing actually. Okay, so, these are issues uh, that comes into picture. Then another issue is probably inaccuracy in computations, for example, like if you talk about matrix inversion and all, you may, I mean there are some finite truncation may happen and then this is, this issue comes because of uh, numerical problems and all that. So, we will uh, uh, the objective here is to increase the robustness of uh, dynamic inversion design especially and in this particular design we have studied in detail uh, from last previous I mean uh, sometime uh, before I mean the, I think probably lecture number 30 or around that and uh, we can uh, I hope uh, everything is clear there and, the, and within this resp within this dynamic inversion framework, we are going to study how to increase the robustness. As a dynamic inversion at that point of time, we realize that it is sensitive to modeling inaccuracy and that point of time also told that we will study an approach to make it uh, robust with respect to this particular issue. So, that is what the primary objective in, the, in this particular lecture. So, we want to increase the robustness of dynamic inversion design with respect to parameter inaccuracy and or, or modeling inaccuracy. So, modeling does not mean only parameter, it can also have algebraic terms missing and all that. So, with respect to that we want to increase the uh, robustness of that uh, the DI design. This particular lecture is, is taken from this In in my view it was one of the seminal papers actually, uh, the conference version of it probably appeared around 94, the journal version is uh, what you see here is more complete and the complete detail analysis and all I think is given in the appendix of this paper. And this particular paper talks about flight control design especially, so I am not going to take you through details of flight control design per se, 
but I will take you through detail, details of the method and then just one or two results that are that are reported in the paper, I will just take you through to demonstrate how this method is powerful actually. But also remember there are variety of uh, versions these authors have proposed, there are especially Anthony Kallis in, in Georgia taken on that, uh, several several co-authors with that and then hundreds of papers have appeared around this, this theme actually. So, once you understand the basic part of it, probably the understanding all branches out of that should not be that difficult actually. Okay. So, let us talk about uh, what we see here. All right. So, system dynamics that you are I mean considering here is x double dot is f of x x dot and delta. Delta appears to be like a control variable and intentionally it is taken because delta e, delta i, delta r all that are, are flight control variables actually like control surface deflections and all. And why do you take double dot, dot and all because this is one of the forms that appears naturally in system dynamics and especially if you see Newton's second law it is uh, something like relates to double dot m x double dot is f actually and that is how we st start doing that. So, uh, if you really want to control let us say my, I mean you if you want to design a control based on the attitude dynamics actually. So, for example, that phi theta psi if you if you remember then phi dot theta dot psi dot are, are functions of PQR, but they, they are not functions of control actually, but if you take double derivatives then p dot q dot r dot appears and then the, the, the deltas will start appearing. So, uh, so, in other words the flight control problem that we typically interested in is of relative degree 2 actually. So, that is what we, we are considering here. We in general will take uh, this particular system dynamics x double dot is f of x x dot delta. x is typically not a state variable you cannot call it that way, but x and x dot taken together will define the state space. Okay. A system dynamics that you are considering is in this form, where x and x dot are of uh, n dimensional, I mean they operate in n dimensional space and delta operates in, a, in m dimensional space. So, what are the assumptions? Assumption is uh, first of all x and x dot are available for control computation, okay. so they are, uh, uh, they are available with us to use. Second big assumption is m equal to n that means it is a square system in the sense that x and dimension of x is equal to dimension of delta here. Okay, remember x is just half of the state space, it is not the complete state space actually. Okay, so, x and x, x and x dot both are like n dimensional thing, but n is equal to m. So, that means, uh, x and delta are of uh, same dimension here, which typically happens in, in flight control design. If you see phi theta psi is r 3 and delta i, delta i, delta r are also 3 basically. So, that typically happens that way. Also, there is an assumption that f is invertible for all time and that is what we need for cal calculating the control delta if you know what is the what is the like uh, ideal value of f actually if you know what is what is ideal value of s and that is later on later on it will be defined as pseudo control actually but if you if you know the ideal value of f what it should be then this is what it is so if from extracting delta out of that what it should be is something like uh, an inverse function so you need uh, some f is invertible actually so what's the objective or goal here that x should go to xc and x dot should also go to x c dot actually, where x c is the commanded signal. That is, if you remember dynamic inversion, it is, it is something like star actually, like star. But here I will be, I will be, I mean, I will try to be as compatible to the notations as reported in the paper, so that uh, reading that paper will be also easier for you actually. Okay, so x x goes to x c and x dot goes to x c dot. So, but x is a commanded signal, remember all these are time varying signals actually, they are not constant values and all that. So, how do you do that? Uh, let us say this, this function is exactly known to us, that means there is no uncertainty and all that. So, that, that falls in the case of the regular dynamic inversion and if you really know want to the, have this objective met, then what do you do? I mean we define uh, something like an error, error is let us say x tilde which is x c minus x either way you can define x minus x or x e minus x does not matter really. <coughs> so, you define x tilde is x e minus x and we want to design a control delta such that this error dynamics is satisfied. I mean that is uh, that is what we discussed in, in dynamic inversion class right. If it is like e double dot plus k d e dot plus uh, plus k p e equal to 0 sort of thing, but instead of e we are talking as x tilde, x tilde is the error between x e and x actually. So, if you design delta such that this equation is satisfied where k d and k p are positive definite matrices, then our objective is met, we know that. 
because in that situation both x, x tilde and x tilde dot will go to 0. If, if this equation is satisfied exactly then x tilde and x tilde dot both will go to 0 and hence this equation both the objectives will be met actually. All right, so one way of selecting this KP KD being positive definite matrices is uh, you select uh, KD and KP both diagonal matrices and you typically select uh, let us say I mean KPI, KDI okay, they are ith element of the diagonal matrix to be positive and typical way to select it also is also like, uh, like KDI is something like uh, 2 zeta i omega i omega n i okay. and uh, K, KPI is omega n i square. So, that will follow typically to the standard form that we know x, the x double dot plus uh, 2 zeta omega n right 2 zeta omega n uh, I mean 2 zeta i omega n i x tilde i dot plus omega n n square and all that actually. So, uh, essentially uh, we have discussed all that in the in the di I mean dynamic inversion class and the way to select the zeta i omega n i zeta i omega n i are to select for this uh, performance uh, objectives like uh, settling time percentage overshoot like that actually. Anyway, coming back, uh, so if you select uh, this error dynamics and if you know that this uh, system matrix, uh, I mean this this, uh, this function is uh, known exactly, then what do you do? I mean we want to design n delta so that this error equation is satisfied. And if this error equation is satisfied, let us say uh, this is the ith, uh, ith element equation actually and this ith element equation I can uh, expand it that way. So, because remember x is nothing but x c minus x. So, x i tilde is nothing but x c i minus x i actually. So, this double dot remains there actually. Okay. So, I will I will retain this as it is these two these two terms, but this one I will put it into in the, the definition part of it. So, x i tilde double dot is nothing but x c i double dot minus x i double dot. So, that that is how it is I just expanded this particular term. So, now you want to solve for x i double dot. So, this particular term if I see I, I solve it for x i double dot and x i double dot turns out to be all this term this one plus that one plus that one okay, right. So, if, if and this particular term okay, is something that I define as u i which is nothing but ith component of what they call I mean lot of people also call it as a, a pseudo control actually. Okay. Why it is not really the control, but what you really want? You want this x i double dot to behave something like this, okay, where this k d and k p are design gains anyway. So, that is something that we are enforcing, this dynamics is something we are enforcing. This is nothing to do with the system dynamics yet. Okay. So, this particular thing is something that we are enforcing and whatever we are enforcing is nothing but like a control variable actually. So, that is why it is called pseudo control actually. So, if you see if you see this x i double dot is u i and it is nothing but i th component of the pseudo control. So, if you repeat this exercise for i equal to I mean 1 to n sort of thing or you can directly start with this definition and uh, indirectly get a big capital x double dot and all that that is also possible right. If I if instead of going through the i th component I will start directly from here and then put it uh, this expression back here that x i double dot uh, minus x double dot is equal to all that and exactly like what is going on here. And then I will arrive at something like x double dot is equal to u. This u is nothing but pseudo control vector actually, pseudo control variable in general basically. So, so remember. So, what you what you are doing? I mean, in, in the in dynamic inversion design, the one way to interpret this design is also like okay, let me design a pseudo control first, because that is what what is meant by pseudo control here. Okay. So, if I design it then okay, this equation is something that I know this x double dot is f of this because that is system dynamics and this x double dot is something equal to pseudo control that I want to design. So, let me equate the equate the two is one and the same thing whatever way we have interpreted before is one and the same thing just uh, talking in a little bit roundabout way actually. But a lot of people in literature will, will talk about pseudo control. So, it is better that we, we know what we mean actually. Anyway, so x double dot is equal to u and then x double dot is equal to f of x, x delta, uh, delta also. So, these two functions uh, let me equate now and the pseudo control will contain the gains remember that. So, all this error, error dot gains and all are all hidden in the pseudo control actually. Now, if this function is exact okay, then uh, I can compute delta as inverse of that. Remember this number of equations are same because number of x uh, by assumption what we started is m equal to n. 
So, number of uh, states I mean uh, number of x variables are equal to number of x dot variables and number is equal to number of delta variables. So, what you see here is the dimension compatibility is there actually the number of variables are equal to number of equations. So, then we will we'll, we'll want to solve delta okay, how do you solve delta symbolically it is represented as f inverse this. Okay. So, that is where we need the third assumption and we tell okay, this, this function what you have is invertible. If it is invertible I can talk about inverting this actually. And if it is uh, really like control a fine sort of thing, the matter is all uh, already there for us to know actually. Like uh, this, is, suppose it is f of x x dot plus g of x x dot times delta, then this delta is uh, directly solvable. I mean that that's what we have done before. Alright, symbolically speaking, delta is nothing but f inverse uh, this function. So you have, as long as we know x and x dot and u, u contains all that actually remember. So, that is commanded vari variable and it is uh, I mean commanded variable x c and it is uh, first derivative as well as second derivative. If you know you can comp compute all that and then you put it here actually. So, with the information of commanded variables I mean commanded signal whatever we have and uh, in the gains that you are selecting we will be able to compute this. This is like a regular dynamic inversion actually. Now, where the problem comes? Okay, so, problem ca comes because of uh, several issues and one issue is uh, how do I talk about inverse function actually. Okay, in general I mean if it is a problem function is uh, simple and all that I can talk about uh, doing an inverse symbolically, but let us say that is not possible in general. So, what uh, the authors have proposed here is okay, let us uh, let us use some sort of a neural network to train this inverse function offline. So, I, I know where my flight dynamics for I mean where my flight envelope is. So, within that flight envelope I will train a neural network and those of you do not know what is neural network you can think of it is like something like a function approximation tool actually. So, this is actually a function delta equal to some function of x x dot u and uh, you can train this uh, one neural network a priori with the expected values of the of this x x dot and all that within the domain that you are interested in and then this inverse function is directly uh, captured using a neural network. This part may or may not be necessary. Suppose you you, you can uh, directly compute delta, and your let's say your uh, model model of the flight vehicle is 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 in control a fine form, then directly you'll be able to solve it actually. Okay, so there is no need of uh, doing this neural network training a priori, but uh, in general uh, it's it should I mean it's possible actually. Now what's the problem? Problem is the model that we started with this model. There are imperfections because of these issues. Okay, so the, that model itself is not good. And then we are also talking about uh, training a network. Okay, any amount of training that you do, this training is never perfect anyway. Any function approximation can never capture a function exactly. There will be some function approximation errors actually. So these two issues uh, will introduce errors there, and because of which the dynamic inversion will not work actually uh, in a very good way. So how do you improve that actually? That's that's the problem actually. Okay. So what we real what we really see here is this. There is an error. Okay. So, can we really cancel that error in, in an adaptive way? So, we will try to learn that error somehow somewhere and then try to kind of cancel that error that is that is the whole philosophy of this uh, neuro adaptive design and that function approximation or something that uh, that learning part will be done in an adaptive may, uh, adaptive theory based uh, sort of thing actually. Adaptive in other words instantaneously will not be able to cancel, but, uh, but uh, using the information in a sequential way then you should be able to adapt your function in such a way that the imperfection will get cancelled out actually. So, let us see that how do you do that. So, what is the, what's the idea here we want to design another neural network. So, this remember this is neural network 1. So, that is just to have that inverse function ready and all that. So, now let us talk about another neural network neural network 2 let us say. Okay, to cancel this error actually. Okay, now, how do you do that? So, let us say we have synthesized this delta delta hat actually okay, using a neural network. So, that is our actual whatever neural network predicts or whatever this function inverse is, is giving us that is nothing but delta hat actually. So, what is my system dynamics? System dynamics if I go back and look at it this is my system dynamics really. Right? original system dynamics if I look at it then this is my system dynamics really. Okay. Now, this delta hat is, is not perfect by the way okay. whatever is exactly needed for the system dynamics is not perfect. So, what I do I will do I will kind of let, let me add and subtract these two terms actually. Okay. 
this instead of delta I mean this f of x x dot delta h I will keep it and I will add this term and subtract that term again. So, that is I have this is same as x double dot actually ok. Now, what is this? Now, let me interpret that this particular thing is nothing but my, my ideal pseudo control actually. My delta is modified in such a way. Now, de delta prime I mean delta h is something that I am computing the, with this function, but delta is something else actually ok. Now, delta is, is computed in such a way that that is nothing but exactly my pseudo control actually ok. That is the whole idea there. Then what is the error? Error is nothing but this minus that ok. What, whatever I have here this minus that introduces some error actually ok. So, that error I will I will uh, I will call that as delta prime ok. Because if I know delta for, for whatever if I if I somehow I know this delta for my exact for, for my actual system then that is what uh, I will need for, for inverting my function actually ok. Uh, but I do not know that. So, let us see how to how to synthesize that and all that actually. But es essentially this is what uh, if, I, if I know that then I will do this add and subtract uh, operation and I will see that ok this is my uh, u plus this delta prime. Now, if I so what is my x, uh, uh, my real x, x double dot my real x double dot is uh, my pseudo control the ideal pseudo control whatever I should have plus the error actually. And hence, this uh, this entire uh, error dynamics that we started with, this error dynamics is not satisfied actually. Okay, right? I mean, this error dynamics that we started with is not satisfied because this is, if it is equal to, I mean, that x x dot is equal to u, uh, sorry, x double dot is equal to u, then it is uh, it will satisfy exactly. But it is uh, not u anymore, so it is uh, it is u plus delta prime. Okay. So, and then hence if you go back and substitute that this error dynamics will not get satisfied actually. So, the error need not go to 0 that is that is the whole idea there. So, how this uh, how this operation is going on here like if you if you see here the if I somehow know this exact uh, u and all that let me go through this neural network 1 which is the inverse of that function I will get a delta prime and that delta prime I will uh, put it through that this function actually. Okay and then x double dot will appear and then I will double integrate take x and all that actually and I can uh, do partial integration like 1 by s one time then x dot will be available 1 by s one more time x will be available I can take signals wherever I want actually. This is just a block diagrammatic uh, representation nothing nothing more actually. So, mathematically speaking we are still uh, here uh, I mean still at the issue that x double dot is not equal to the ideal pseudo control, but it is the ideal pseudo control plus some error term actually ok. So, how do you deal with that? So, whole idea is can I design a, cons a control properly so that this delta prime will go to 0 actually and then it then we are ok basically. So, so that is the observation if delta prime is 0 ok then my x double dot is equal to u and I am I am fine actually ok. So, how do you do that? So, let us talk about uh, this pseudo control fellow is something like uh, ui minus u adaptive height actually that is ok u i stands for the ideal pseudo control ideal case ok. Uh, like if the system dynamics is perfect and all that under those condition whatever con pseudo control is available to us that is that is denoted as the u i that is all actually ok. Then this actual pseudo control what I am talking here is nothing but u i minus the another term that I am bringing in here ok. This is nothing but adaptive part a part of the pseudo control actually. So, this will be computed adaptively. So, u i is uh, is nothing but the, the original case sort of thing that ideal pseudo control part of it okay, ideal case and u a d hat is adaptive control to cancel the unwanted effect actually ok. And because this entire operation I mean if you see that the pseudo control modification is going on here and pseudo control is a concept which is applicable to dynamic inversion only. So, the entire the philosophy that you are talking here in this class is applicable to dynamic inversion only actually. So, it does not probably contain the, the sufficient generality to apply to apply to any other design actually. So, the, the, the method that we will talk in the next class will have that that general property basically ok. But anyway, coming back to this, this is what we want. So, u is u i minus u i d hat and u i is ideal pseudo control, u i d hat is adaptively what we can what we want to I mean compute basically. So, if with that what how is the system dynamics behaving? So, if I go back to this error dynamics Okay, that is what I want to see it as 0 actually ultimately ok. So, error dynamics is some um, the first term is x c minus uh, I mean the first term is expanded here x c double dot minus uh, x double dot 
okay, other terms are kept as it is. And this one uh, I will put it here, okay, this particular thing and then these two, last two terms I will keep it together and that is nothing but my ideal pseudo control, okay, that is the by definition that is my ideal pseudo control. Now, what about uh, rest of the part, okay, this particular remember x double dot is nothing but uh, u plus delta prime, that is what we just computed. So, x double dot is something uh, I mean whatever I have u plus delta prime, okay, this is nothing but x double dot. This x double dot I am substituting as u plus delta prime, and this u is nothing but uh, ui minus u ad hat. Okay, so this u I will substitute as ui minus u ad hat. Okay, and this this minus will come here actually anyway. So if I if I see this this is nothing but my ui, this is uh, my ui minus u ad hat, and this is my minus delta prime actually. So how what is what is getting operated here? So this error entire error dynamics is not zero but this is u a d prime uh, sorry u a d hat minus delta prime. So ideally what would what we what should be the objective of this u a d hat design that is adaptive control design is to make it equal to delta prime as much as possible. So if you make it equal then uh, it is zero the entire error dynamics will be perfect actually that is that is the whole uh, key, key idea basically here. So can we design this adaptive control? in such a way that u a d hat will be at least approximately equal to delta prime. We will not be able to do a very perfect job I mean because any function approximation is also a never perfect anyway. So, because of that we will not be able to do but at least can we make it approximately equal to that. So, the entire error dynamics will operate like ideal case even with the presence of uh, system dynamics being imperfect, uh, inverses being imperfect and all that actually. Okay. So, that is the objective here. Okay. Now, if this happens, if it if it is approximately equal to that, then we know that this two will be zero approximately at least, and ith channel will operate something like this, right? If if it happens to be like this, then this will be uh, this will be approximately equal to zero at least. Now, under the I mean anyway, coming back to this, let me again analyze the ith channel of this error dynamics. Okay, this is the vector sense and all that. Let me consider only ith channel. An ith channel will operate something like that, where this particular term is now a scalar component. Remember that, and this is I mean I didn't want to put the small notation and all because this is what this word book follows. I mean the paper follows. Anyway, so this is the whenever you see i subscript i, that means it's a ith component of that vector, so it's a scalar variable. So anyway, so this is ith channel uh, error dynamics happening in this is also now ith channel. Remember this is the full vector, but that is now ith channel of that that vector actually. Okay. Now, this error dynamics I want to represent that uh, in terms of uh, state space equation okay, let us say now. So, then I will define E as something like x tilde and x tilde dot standard uh, definition of phase variable form and all that. And then this E i dot uh, which is a vector equation now 2 by 1 vector actually this is this is in standard vector form. Why do we need that? Because we know the Lyapunov theory is that sort of uh, we want to apply here is uh, demands that the system dynamics should be in state space form. Okay, so, the double derivative forms and all that are, are not applicable with respect to Lyapunov theory that we know actually. So, we want to convert this into state space form actually here. So, this uh, this is a 2 by 1 state, uh, state space for, a, for every channel of this error you will have a 2 by 1 uh, vector uh, in, the, in the state space actually. Anyway, so that is what it is. Also remember that because because this KDI KPI is selected to be positive to satisfy that if this is equal to 0, then this is actually like an ideal error dynamics. Right? So, that means the, the KDI and KPI are, are selected in such a way that the roots of this characteristic equation are always in the left hand side. And if that happens, then this AI matrix is certainly Hurwitz actually. Okay, because that AI comes from the, there any, anyway, I mean it does not come anywhere else, it just comes from there. Okay. The way you write this is state space and all that. So, if you see the eigenvalue locations of uh, eigenvalue locations of this AI matrix is nothing but the poles of this characteristic equation anyway here and that will obviously this is this is the aerodynamics that we are selecting and we will always select a good aerodynamics anyway that means uh, the poles are always in the left hand side actually. So, AI is uh, is always always actually that is that is a necessary uh, down the line actually I will again talk about that. And this entire thing what you see in the right hand side is interpreted as some sort something like a control input to this is this system dynamics here. Okay. So, 
if I see this x i double dot and the, that is what I am writing here everything here and this entire term is like uh, my single uh, input control and what I have is 0 1 here okay. so that is a standard uh, phase state variable form sort of thing phase variable form. So, ideal purpose the goal of this u i d i hat uh, I mean the ideal purpose of that is to capture the function delta i hat perfectly almost perfectly let us say. So, that e i goes to 0 asymptotically, but this is difficult to achieve and uh, hence we aim what is called as practical stability. Okay, what do you mean by practical stability? It means a, a e i will remain bounded where the bound can be made arbitrarily small. So, e i first of all e i should remain, remain small, but you will not be left with okay, it is only bounded and the bound uh, I mean I have to live with whatever bound it pops up picture that is not practical stability. The bound can be made uh, small as uh, small as you want, you will not be able to make it 0, okay. but you will by appropriate selection of design variables and all that you can make it small actually. Okay. So, and uh, and uh, not only that the moment this uh, trajectory of the, st the system dynamics goes outside the bound, then it is guaranteed to come inside the bound. Okay. It should not uh, whenever it goes outside it will come inside I mean that, that guarantee is always there and that bound can be made arbitrarily kind of small actually that, that is what practical stability means actually yeah, that what a lot of engineering problems we are satisfied with that actually anyway. All right. So, if you see this uh, like okay, now coming back to this, this uh, let us consider okay, delta i prime what you have been talking about. Now, there let us talk about a uh, delta i prime hat now okay, which is nothing but uh, neural network realization of this function. Okay. So, these different notations are necessary because we are we are talking about different things anyway. So, the, so delta i prime is the, the ideal error that, that is there in the system dynamics and delta i prime hat is, is a neural network realization of that. So, obviously, there will be an error between the two there will be like uh, neural networks cannot uh, approximate a uh, function or, or be, I mean with 0 error and any function approximation cannot uh, approximate a function with 0 error anyway basically. So, because of that there is a necessity to choose different notations and then talk about an error between the two actually. And why is that because we will talk about finite number of basis functions. If you if you talk infinite number of basis function probably okay, arbitrarily small and error can be 0 and all sort of things, but then we will not be able to do that. And uh, I mean uh, all practical realization, practical implementation will always talk about finite number as anyway, because each of the basis function will have a weight associated with that and uh, that, that weight vector also needs to be integrated in parallel, we will see that as we go, on, go along actually. So, we certainly need a finite number of basis vector and because of that these two are never equal and hence there is a change of notation actually. And with respect to this particular thing, this, uh, this neural network, we will talk about this basis functions actually. Okay. <laughs> this basis function that you are going to use is, uh, is, is the notation wise will define that way with the corresponding weights of the network being like that. Okay. What, what is the meaning of that? The meaning is this approximation of this, for this function that I am talking about can be represented as something like that. Something like uh, okay, in the ith, ith channel it is something like okay, if I forget I like that this, uh, this is like j equal to 1 to some finite uh, number n that we are talking about here. Okay, so, that means, uh, is the W i prime uh, W i 1 uh, time, uh, times beta 1 beta i 1 let us say plus W i 2 times beta i 2 is like that it will continue to a finite series sort of thing. And betas are something that is designed actually that means, basis function are something chosen a priori okay. and typically one way to select that is Gaussian network here because the, the weights appear linearly we are talking about linear in the weight network actually. So, if you select this as Gaussian basis function then the weights of, uh, we are interpreting that as uh, linear in the weight actually. Okay. So, this is uh, this is how we will we'll interpret. So, in other words you, ca you can write it something what I told just now I mean this summation sign can be written in a vector matrix way that way actually. So, ultimately what you can write here is uh, u a d i that particular uh, ith component of the adaptive control can be written as w i transpose times beta i prime which beta i prime is the vector entire vector actually. Okay. So, ideal case uh, when uh, w i hat is optimized over some compact domain remember, remember neural networks typically want the compact domain 
and compact domains uh, as we discussed in Lyapunov theory some time back it is something like uh, the set is uh, uh, the domain needs to be closed and bounded both actually and then only neural networks uh, approximations are valid actually. The universal function approximation theory that is there in the neural network is valid only in a compact domain actually. So, that is why it is needed and most of the engineering problems these are anyway compact actually. So, these are will not have those issues actually. Anyway, so uh, when W i hat is optimized over some compact domain okay, in this uh, I mean uh, in this set sort of thing <laughs> okay, after this optimization over let the result be W i hat star actually. Okay, so, that is the, the uh, very optimal weight after the training is done. Okay. In that sense uh, what will happen this delta i prime hat star that is the notation that I will use. Okay. This star is nothing but the ideal function uh, function that is captured more than that we cannot do okay. that is the best thing that we can always do actually. That is something that goes with W i star now that is the optimal weight actually. Okay. So, that is how I will uh, uh, write it actually and obviously W i star W i hat star is something that we do not know and if we know I mean directly we will select it and then problem is over we do not need adaptive capture actually. So, the problem I mean we know that there is there exists some weight W i hat star which is ideal, but the value is something that we do not know. So, obviously in an adaptive way we want to go there we want to approach that W i hat star as, as much as possible actually. So, in that case uh, this delta i hat prime star is, uh, is given like that and, uh, and this error between these two will remain something very small actually. Okay. So, that is the ideal error of the function approximation okay, the epsilon i what you are talking actually. So, all right. So, uh, I mean the whole idea is the actual uh, ui uid hat is uh, given by something like w i hat transpose times beta i prime and ultimately we will be able to at the maximum we can go to this w i hat star and in that sense we will have some function which is delta i prime star right and these two fellows will uh, will have some errors in between and which the error is the uh, that is the ideal function approximation error which are uh, denoting as epsilon i. So, again this algorithm some sort of a pictorial diagram is something given like this. And I will I'll not uh, discuss too much on that I mean you get this commanded thing then you formulate the error then you pass it through that uh, that function you get a this p d part of it and then you get a adaptive control then you add and subtract both of that add x i double dot also. This one will go through this neural network 2 which is online this one one, one will go through the adapt, I mean this offline thing where this is, is not shown here this will go through the I mean once you uh, once this is realized you will take the appropriate signal and then then pass it through the offline signal to get the real control actually. So, that, that part is not shown here. Anyway that is a function that is just a pictorial diagram sort of thing, but uh, you can note that epsilon i depends on the following that means uh, well this is a spell error spelling error here it is size of the network. All right. So, n is uh, I mean epsilon i the i th the ideal error actually depends on size of the ith network the choice of the basis function and accuracy of the neural network. Okay. What is now? No. Okay, let me this is not required. Okay. And essentially the third depends on first two anyway. So, that uh, first two are primary. So, size of the network and choice of the basis function. Okay. So, that will uh, that will ultimately dictate how, how much is your neural network accurate actually that way. So, be careful while selecting the basis function that is the message actually. Oh, again that is there okay, forget it this is same thing you repeated. So, we will not be able to talk actually okay. all right. So, this uh, epsilon i that we are talking here the error between the two will depend on size of the ith network and choice of the basis functions actually. All right. So, now we will go back and analyze what is going on here. So, what is my our estimation error because this is what is ideal and this is what my actual thing that is the error dynamics is not equal to 0, but equal to this quantity now sort of thing. So, the right, but uh, this uh, prime is not there say, I mean this uh, this height is not there there actually ok. We, okay uh, forget this. So, we, uh, what we are talking here is let us analyze this particular term now ok. Now, if you if you substitute this uh, this uh, quantity see this one is nothing but the actual weight this one is nothing but the ideal weight the basis functions are same anyway. 
So, I will be able to combine the vessels I mean this W hat W hat minus W hat star here and write this beta e prime separately actually this is common to both of it. Okay. So, I will tell okay, this error that I am looking at here in the left hand side is nothing but the error in the weights of the network times basis function actually. Okay. And also note that this uh, this W tilde which is error in the weight is nothing but W hat minus W hat star and this W hat star is a constant weight actually. So, this does not ch change with time because that is that's the ideal weight it, it, it never changes with time actually because the function that you are talking here is also like uh, the function that we are talking here is static function. The system dynamics system is dynamic that means x x double dot I mean x dot and all that is they change with change with time. But the function that we are talking about in the right hand side of the uh, equation actually that is a static function the in other words the, the function itself does not change with time actually. So, because of that this function is static and, uh, and all that is uh, happening here is all static actually. So, that means w hat star is a constant vector vector actually. So, if this is constant then the, the if I take time derivative. So, w i tilde dot is nothing but the w right I mean this uh, if I if I see this now ok. Before that uh, this particular thing if I if, if you see here remember that this w and beta can be vectors actually even though this is a scalar quantity this uh, depends on the size of the uh, I mean network and all that actually. Okay, so, that means they are they are vector quantities actually. Okay. So, if I mean if you if you want I mean if you, if you want you can put i everywhere ok this is i here and then i i i i everywhere actually ok. So, these are all vector quantities actually anyway. All right. So, uh, then the to note here is this fellow is 0. So, that is that is gone. So, that means w i tilde dot is nothing but w i hat dot that is that is important to note important to note actually. So, then there is a some little bit change of notation and all the authors are using here. So, whenever u appears they call it like that whenever w tilde appears they call something like that actually. So, it is uh, I mean interchangeably the, the when you when you mean beta i prime it can be argument of this or it can be argument of that and this is used in proof this is used in implementation I mean the, the interchangeably you can use that properly. So, the notation wise if you have E then this is the total vector ok x tilde x tilde dot and E i means this is what it is actually. So, there are some notations on the way. Now, we will go back to the ith channel error dynamics that is what critical thing that we started with. So, error dynamics if you go back ok this is uh, this is what the error dynamics of ith channel ok. So, this is where we will go back and try to see what is going on here actually. So, i channel error dynamics is something like this ok remember b is just a 0 1 actually. So, that is uh, given like that a i is something that we defined before. Now, we will add and subtract this quantity ok here and then I will tell ok this is nothing but my system dynamics for the error dynamics part of it actually. And remember a as I told that time is, is a Hurwitz matrix because if the characteristic equations are like that with gains being positive actually. So, it is certainly going to be a Hurwitz matrix. Once it happens and then we tell ok now let me try to use this uh, this Lyapunov theory and things like that. Now, let us define a Lyapunov function candidate which is summation over this V i, V i stands for ith, ith general Lyapunov function, V i is the Lyapunov function for ith error dynamics. So, I will just consider V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3 up to n whatever I have actually okay. and V i I will define it something like that like uh, if it is I will define some sort of a dead zone. Okay. And if the error quantity norm of that error quantity is defined as pth norm, pth norm is defined something like that. So, if the pth norm is greater than certain E i, okay, then I will take it that way. If it is less than that, I will simply consider that part of it. I am now no more worried about minimizing that error quantity basically. Okay. If it is greater than that, I will define V i to be like that. If it is less than that, I will simply consider that part of it actually. And also remember that by design ok uh, this this is actually continuous V i is actually a continuous function at the boundary actually ok. If you consider that the way what happens equal to this E i suppose actually equal to E i means that is what it is actually right is not it. So, if it is the, like that is that. So, when I mean uh, if you see in a limiting sense when E i goes to 0 sort of thing then it will uh, when e, I mean then what will happen when E i approaches this boundary of this domain then obviously it will touch that. So, that, that there is a continuity there actually that way okay, by design. 
All right. So now, what is this PI that you are talking about? This PI is again a positive definite matrix, which is actually a solution of this Lyapunov equation. And this Lyapunov equation will admit a positive definite matrix because AI is Hurwitz. That's one thing that we discussed in the Lyapunov theory class. Right, I mean, use of Lyapunov theory, like if AI is a stable matrix sort of thing, like Hurwitz matrix, then this Lyapunov equation is guaranteed to admit uh, positive definite solutions for P for any positive definite matrix Q. Yeah, that is the theorem that we studied there actually. So, uh, as I told, the by selection VI is continuous at the boundary of the dead zone, so that is that is fine actually. Okay, so, we will we'll consider this, uh, this VI as something like this, where PI is the solution of Lyapunov equation for any positive definite QI. Okay, so, that is what I told, existence of uh, PDF PI is guaranteed by the fact that A is always. And if QI is equal to identity, okay, if just I put QI equal to identity, AI is something that I know already, right? AI is something like this. Okay. So, I can actually solve for this PI symbolically. If I just put identity here and put this, uh, this thing here, AI is that. Okay. So, it is essentially a 2 by 2 linear equation. So, 2 by 2 linear equation, I will arrange component by component and then I try to solve it for P variables actually, whatever P's are there. No, it is actually P is a, it, the freedom will be 3 actually, not 2, because it is a sim I mean this will be a symmetric matrix where these values are same and these two will be different actually. Okay. So, P will contain say ideally P is 2 by 2 matrix, that means it has 4 variables, but uh, taking it as a symmetric matrix, it will have 3 variables actually. So, 3 equations and all will be available, we will be able to solve it in a closed form way and get it actually. Okay. And you can, you can also verify that if you take any positive numbers for K D K P, then this matrix is certainly guaranteed to be positive definite. You can calculate the eigenvalues and tell okay, when the eigenvalues will remain positive actually. Anyway, coming back to that, uh, that is what we started with the Lyapunov function candidate. Now, let us analyze this, this rate time uh, rate of change actually, that means V i dot actually. Okay. So, if you take V i dot, then you go back to this, this uh, dynamics in general and then start taking the derivative both sides and right hand side and all that. Okay, so, that will become e i dot, e I dot transpose p i e i plus all that algebra actually that goes on with that. Okay. I will not take you through the all the derivation because it is anyway there. Okay. Then you substitute for e i dot uh, here uh, all the terms that you have for e i dot. Okay. Take transpose of that and put e i dot I mean this, uh, this e i expression again uh, sorry e i dot expression again in the right hand side of it. Okay. This e i dot is just something that we derived here this expression. Okay. So, we put it here and then you analyze what is going on, you try to combine terms as much as possible and this first term here and first term here if I combine I, this term pops up and this is nothing but I selected it P i in such a way that the Lyapunov equation is satisfied. That means, this term is nothing but negative of that quantity basically, right. Lyapunov equation is that. So, instead of that I will be able to substitute minus q i. So, I will be able to do that actually there. So, whatever terms are remaining is something like this out of which okay, I will keep something like E i epsilon i actually. Okay. Epsilon i is uh, something like an, uh, like an error quantity which will come from this quantity actually. If you see this, uh, this I think we derived it also like that, right. I mean if, uh, epsilon i somewhere, yeah, this, this two term it will, it will, be, will be less than equal to epsilon i. So, that is, that is going on there. Okay. Okay, this epsilon i is coming here and then this, uh, this w i tilde transpose appears to the left here and it also appears to the left here sort of thing, because this quantity is a, is a scalar quantity. So, this quantity I, this taken together is a scalar quantity, so I will be able to push it uh, to the right if I want. So, I will do that and then take this one common w i tilde transpose and then this term pops up here and this is not uh, the up to this is equal and certainly from here onwards it is less than equal to as I have introduced a norm quantity here. Okay. So, ideally, if you do not have the norm quantity, they are still equal, but I want to make it less than equal to with introduction by introducing a norm quantity. Now, here is one more problem. Here is something like uh, term that is multiplied with W i tilde and W i tilde consists of uh, both W i hat and W i star and W i star is something that we do not know actually. Okay. So, until unless I know something, 
I will not be able to tell what is my W at this quantity, whether it is positive, negative, I will not be able to tell anything actually. So, uh, to avoid the difficulty, what we do is we just put it equal to 0 actually. Okay. So, the coefficient part of it, we just make it equal to 0, let us say. So, if the coefficient is equal to 0, it gives you as a byproduct, it gives you some sort of learn, something like a learning, uh, I mean, neural network learning equation actually. That means, W i hat dot is nothing but that. So, that is I got uh, one approach of updating my weights, which is nothing but uh, weight update rule sort of thing. So, that is how I derive my weight update rule, but uh, even, I, even if I assure that this coefficient is 0, I am still left out with these two terms. So, I have to analyze that actually. Okay. So, uh, this is left out with that and further analysis will be done that way. The term or P i, P I is a positive definite matrix. So, there, there is a definition of square roots and square root can be defined because P i is P d f. And once you do that, uh, then this particular inequality okay, can be defined something like okay, this. Uh, I mean, if you tell this this particular quantity is less than or equal to this quantity, because any positive definite matrix is bounded between this uh, this uh, inequality. We know Raleigh inequality in matrix theory basically. Okay, so we invoke that, and then we try to split up these norms and all that. Okay, we write it that way. So, this is uh, this is also less than I mean like equal to this this particular term. Okay. So, we invoke that one also and then tell the okay, this if this norm what you see here is greater than or equal to that quantity. Okay. So, carry out this this little bit algebra out here in the in the sense of this Raleigh inequality matrix norm all that and then you tell okay, V i dot is less than or equal to that particular quantity. It, I mean, it, it feels little bit involved, but it is not once you sit down with the equ equations actually. You do it uh, one by one term and try to understand one equation at a time, it will not be that difficult. So, I mean all that is going on here is, this is Raleigh inequality applied here in the negative sense, if you tell that and it is applied here in the positive sense actually. So, both the times it is applied and then uh, the square root is split out and then you do the algebra here. And uh, if you ultimately what it turns out is V i dot is less than equal to certain uh, quantity like that here actually. Okay. So, that that you have remember this is a positive term here, this is a negative term here. So, V i dot will become less than equal to 0 whenever this quantity is less than equal to 0, that is the condition that we have to analyze, whether this condition make, makes meaningful sense or not actually. Now, universally it will not be negative definite, if it is negative definite then you are done, but it will not be like that. The under this condition, it will be negative less than equal to 0. So, this condition when you analyze, this condition gives us a very nice condition, it tells us that okay, norm of V i is greater than equal to this quantity, then then V i dot is less than equal to 0. Okay. And this norm is actually a, an error uh, magnitude quantity sort of thing, that has to be greater than the, So, what it tells? As long as this norm or the error amplifies, error grows beyond certain value, which is defined like this this V i dot is negative that means, it will try to pull it back inside actually. Okay. But the problem here is this E i this entire quantity contains this epsilon i term which is unknown actually. Okay. If I know it then I, I have quantity, I, mean, I, mean, I can I can compute this thing, but because I do not know it I will have to do it in some sort of iterative way and to arrive at a proper uh, proper value for this. That means, I will select one and then if it uh, if it is done, then I'll select a little less than that, little less than that, and like that actually. Okay. All right. Now coming back, if QI is equal to I, then this E I quantity. Okay, this is this is E I basically. By the way, this definition sense this this quantity is something defined as E I. Okay. So if this uh, this E I, what you see here, okay. If Qi is equal to i, then this Ei turns out to be like that because this Qi lambda a minimum of Qi is one anyway. Qi is identity means all the eigenvalues are one, so that is that is all non one actually. Non denominator one, so we'll be left out with that actually. Okay, where Pi is, is a solution of that equation which is given before actually. Okay, and there is also a very nice theorem in this paper which tells us that Qi equal to identity is not just the simplification of algebra; it also leads to the least bound. Okay, that is what we are interested in actually. It is a simplification algebra all right, but it also leads to the least bound in the sense of this bound, whatever bound you are showing here, that will be minimum when you select Qi as identity. That is another powerful result actually. Then inside the dead zone, okay, all that happens when this, this uh, when we started with like that, we are analyzing this particular term. 
Now, within that what you do? I mean within the, if it happens to be inside then the then the weight update rule we are just selecting as 0 actually that the w i hat dot equal to 0 that means there is no change of weight after that. So, that is uh, that uh, that is what we are doing here then v i dot will be equal to 0 which is so further minim further error minimization will not happen or at least it will not grow actually v i dot will be assured to be 0 actually. All right. So, what is the implementation of this summary sort of thing? Okay, you have to select this design parameter. These are the design design parameters actually. Wi dot. Okay, all that expression we are deriving some sort of a Wi hat dot actually. That means this is a differential equation. This is a differential equation. That is also a differential equation. Okay. So we all certainly need some sort of a initial condition to integrate this equation, and that initial condition is typically taken as zero and that actually is also good in the sense the suppose the there is no imperfection anywhere then you really do not need to excite this controller the eruptive control will not be excited if the, if the everything is perfectly known and all that then uh, weight will be 0 it will remain 0 also actually okay. the, the, the rate of change this is 0 and that will also turn out to be 0 this this equation if everything equal is ideal then E will be 0 and W i dot will turn out to be 0 everywhere. Okay, so, if start with 0 and it will remain at 0 actually. So, that is another good thing. Anyway, coming back you initialize the w i w i hat uh, to be 0 for every channel every i remember i is the i channel of the uh, system dynamics and all q i we take is identity p i is uh, we evaluate using that formula that the formula that we discussed actually this is the formula okay, you evaluate that you, right remember this is valid with q i equal to identity. So, we will be able to evaluate that. Okay. And then this E i is, is given something like that which is uh, unknown. So, we will try with iteration actually you try with epsilon i some value and things like that, but that is um, primarily for an, uh, for analysis basically okay. anyway. So, the weight update rule tells us like, like this. So, this is uh, this weight update rule will apply as long as this is this equation satisfied you can say the p, th, uh, p i norm or something this norm is defined something like this. Okay, like uh, I define okay, this p i norm is defined like the square root of e i transpose p i e i basically. So, if that is that quantity is greater than that quantity the, the certain value okay, this e i and this e i we have to guess remember. So, it is selected with that and then you apply that is that weight out rule otherwise it is 0 actually. Okay. So, this is a basis function that you have to select okay, this is uh, again this uh, everywhere is prime. So, it is also beta e prime this is uh, if you have to select this uh, beta i which is basis function and gamma should be a learning rate which also needs to be selected actually. Then com uh, you compute this adaptive control that way uid hat this is the adaptive control part of it okay. and then you compute the pseudo control which is like this we all define on the way of discussion and the actual control has to be like that which is inverse of that which is given like that. So, that is how we compute actually. And the nice results are also given in the paper is something like that the adaptation happens in finite time it does not take forever to go there. So, it does not happen take infinite time to adapt and also remember that the st goes to infinity e i will lie inside the dead zone this is something picturally given some sort of a dead zone e i definition and all that. So, this is like norm of e i I mean p i norm this is there. So, e i if I put a vertical line this is my dead zone actually sort of thing. Okay. So, it will ultimately go to the red zone and it approaches to a constant value actually. So, what is happening it is if you picturally speaking diagrammically if some of initially my trajectory is here it will go here okay. then by for some reason if it comes out then it will again go and if it some reason it goes out and again go it goes out again go and all that. And they have also shown in the paper that every time it comes out and goes back it will always approach to a smaller value it will never go to uh, go back to the normal value and the original value it will keep uh, when it goes out it will enter to that uh, dead zone, but with a smaller value of that actually. So, that is another nice part of it actually there are several nice things that, that this paper gives us actually. Now, representative result sense you see this without adaptive control this is not behaving very well this, so this is a commanded signal sort of thing, but with adaptive control okay, this n n 1 plus n n 2 neural network 2 that is adaptive control part of it this is very close to the commanded value we do not see any deviation at all the, the, the moment this plant is uh, something different and all that uh, it uh, tries to adapt it very quickly rather okay. and same thing happens also here you see then the error between this uh, solid line and this this particular thing is so small whereas, if you do not have the adaptive control this is going very off actually 
Okay. And several several results are there with a number of papers that I told before. It is just not it is just a representative thing for you to see. And more details you can always see from the paper actually. These are the references. Primarily I borrowed this from first reference as I told you, but these are also like one more which will tell you the how do you use this theory along with the like linear controllers for example. So, this is this is the paper that will give you. This is another paper for helicopter flight control from the same group sort of thing, uh, almost applying the same theory sort of thing. So, if you see variety of problem they have solved again. And there are various ramifications for example, they have gone uh, this uh, like reconfigurable control, so pseudo control hedging and all sort of things are available actually. So, I encourage you to read some of those literature and get comfortable with. With this I will stop this class, thank you.